What's up guys, how's it going? As per usual, you might be thinking to yourself, what build we have here? Well, this is my Holy Guide build. I now have a full set of Aura's gear. Now, mindset-wise, this is my advice for those of you who are starting out, and I don't care who you are. If you're a warrior, an archer, or a mage, whichever profession of which you choose, you want to always go for the highest quality gear and not worry about which filter you have until after you get a full set of Aura's gear. Because once you have a full set of Aura's gear, then you can start to nitpick the skills. And then you can start to go after what you want. And better yet, you can then also do one step above that. You create sets, my friends. That is to say, go to gear plan, pick a different set of gear, and you too can make different sets of gear. So after you've got a set of Aura's gear, you can then start fiddling around with, you know, what if I just said I wanted nothing but stun? What if I wanted nothing but combo? Or what if I wanted just these two stats in all of my gear? That is the way, my friends. That is the way. The next thing, and this is something that I've kind of picked up on, on really kind of the, the way I prefer my build, is I'm running Cat Prince, I'm running Fiery Tail, and I am a Holy Mage, okay? That is to say, in my build, I am almost fully awakened. I am not quite a prophet yet. I am not far. I am not far at all. And if you're wondering, how do I get Red Soul Selection 2? And how do I get Awakening Crystals? I'm going to have an answer for you, but you're not going to like it. Okay? In order to get these, all right, you've got to go and you got to do this thing called cross server ranked matches. And you got to go into the shop and you've got to win. And then you can get Awakening Crystals once a week for 2,000, which sucks. It takes a lot of work to get this. The other thing is for 4,000, you can get a Red Soul Selection 2. And as you might imagine, you need those Red Soul Selection 2s, for that matter, in order to make pink souls. So if you've been wondering, how do I make pink souls, I just answered your bloody question. And it sucks, because it takes a lot of work to get those, okay? So outside of spending, you really don't have a lot of options here, all right? But outside of that, really about the only other thing in this build, right, other than the current PAL selection I have, I'm running this rotation. I'm running Blade Pierce, Clone Strike. I have like a one and a half second uh, delay on Clone Strike, and then I have Star Array, I have Shroom Shield, and then I have Dazzled, okay? And as far as my relics are concerned, I'm going Demon Mask, Thundercaller Kite, Flame Book, Storm Necklace, Stellar Statue, and Magic Box. Now, you can if you want to, right? That You've probably seen the stun builds out there. If you're wondering why I'm just using Dazzled, Clone Strike, and Shroom Shield, and then using Blade Pierce and Star Array, it all comes down to the fact that I found this to be a lot more effective in terms of making yourself do a lot more damage as a mage. Now, you could just as easily, like, I don't know, even on a good day, you could go in here and, you know, like, you could conceivably go in here and adjust, you know, like, for example, 100 slashes would be good in a warrior build, you know, because you're just needing basic attack at that point. You know, arguably, you could also just as easily get, you know, a set of disarm. You could go any number of pathways with this. I mean, you could even go Blitz Assault instead of Blade Pierce if you want to be immortal as opposed to being, you know, a, a damage-dealing messer from hell you know it's just it whatever you do decide to do it you just have to kind of play around with it and obviously you know if you go like blitz assault the only thing that you're going to swap out in that case is the spirit necklace and just, you know instead of the storm necklace and you could go like crimson sickle necklace if you wanted to say run a wild guest which is the uh tornado basically run the wild guest skill, and then just run the rest and stuns. You can do that too, and it works great. You know, I mean, you could also... I, could, I, I, I The reason why I use Star Array, right, is I, I'm, I'm focusing heavy on skill crit, okay? So skill crit and skill crit damage is what makes this build work the way it does. You get a really high skill crit, which means that basically it's going to proc every time your skills fire off. And you're going to have a lot of skill damage and a lot of skill crit damage. And it's just a wonderful mix to put together. Now, a lot of combo builds, you know, it's much of the same argument. You know, it's super high combo with a lot of combo multiplayer. 
and that's ultimately how their builds operate. You know, counter builds, same logic, high counter strike, and then a lot of counter damage. You know, it's not terribly complicated to figure out how all these builds operate, but where they get complicated and where I see a lot of them, you know, rise and fall, like on a Plume Monarch build, for example, they, they grab the attack speed bonuses, you know, and this I think is kind of one of the factors that kind of goes into all of these, which is to say that like, even if you're like a mage, you're expecting stuns and a holy guide, for example, to fire off to basically lower your skill CD or your active skill CD duration to go down. And the thing is, is every time you run a Meteor from Meteor Blitz, for example, it's extending the duration of basic attack stuns on targets within range by 30%, lasting up to 5 seconds. You also get a skill CD reduction, which, you know, 30%, which is huge, right? You also get a 50% prolonged active skill, and every stun reduces the cooldown of all active skills by 0.3 seconds, which is to say... With an increase to your skill crit, you basically can proc a bunch, and that's what makes this build so cool. You know, it focuses heavily on skill crits, and that's part of the, you know, you want to make sure you're taking advantage of whatever your class gives you at, at a get-go, and that's why you have certain class builds. You know, so obviously, you know, let's say, hey, you want to reset, you want to change your mind, you want to, you can do that, right? You, you could just as easily decide that, you know what, I just don't like this build. And you can reset and go move to a different class or try a different method of playing the game. I'm going to say that Plume Monarchs or anybody in the Arrow God and this category, those guys are absolutely nutty because they just go super heavy in combo. I've seen Sacred Hunter and it's again same same thing crazy crazy high dps i have seen some warbringers and the warbringer builds are just you know much in the same way that a combo build works you know it's just heavy 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 dps now dark lord's kind of an interesting one because one thing you'll notice is even though he has the skill crit he increases skill crit damage by 50 percent and then he deals 160% extra damage to targets below 50%, and the next basic attack deals an additional 100%. So Dark Lord, where you know you look at profit, where every stun triggers an active skill, prolonging active skills by 50, and the active skill regen, there's attack and skill crit, you get Crane's Whisper. And Crane's Whisper is interesting because it breaks enemy shields instantly with attacks for 10 seconds, which I think is incredibly broken. When you take into consideration that everybody in BVP, and I don't care who they are, whether they be at the top or the bottom, almost all of them, there's a lot of them that use shields. And I just think the opportunity to be able to use that in the profit class is going to be huge. And so I'm going to give that a try and really see where that goes. But that's ultimately my suggestion in my build so far.